Kentucky with the sermon title, The Time Is Now. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's wonderful to be back. Uh, wonderful. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Pastor Ajamal for the invitation. Um, it's uh, very, uh, very huge on my heart. Yeah? So, it uh, shows a great trust. Yeah? Um, secondly, uh, thank the band for their awesome music. That was Incredible drumming, yeah? I'm very jealous we don't have such a drummer in North London, yeah? So, uh, uh, yeah. 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 And uh, lastly, Adrian, thank you for being such a wonderful MC to set the stage with the precision of an architect, yeah? I wonder where you got it from, yeah? Um, could I ask, please, the band to distribute um, some uh, notes to everybody? This is in the spirit of Bruno, um, giving out bits of paper to everybody, and in the spirit of Mr. Balcom, to give homework at, at the end of the day. So uh, this is my uh, homework preparation for everybody. Um, on, on the back of the piece of paper is a, a simple notepad where you can write notes, write inspirations, write thoughts if you feel so moved. Now, um, my first point, why did we come? Why did you come? to the Sunday service today. One is to greet God. Yeah? In uh, South Germany, one says, Grüß Gott, I, I uh, see God in you. In, uh, in India, you say Namaste. Namas means I bow, Te means you. So it means I bow to the divinity that I see in you. So we're seeing the incarnation of God in our fellow man. Yeah? So let's bow to each other. Let's see the divinity of God's sons and God's daughters being emerging from each and every one that's here today. Why do we come to a Sunday service? Uh, we come to meet each other. Yeah. So face-to-face uh, -face is really good. I'm so inspired yeah, to come face-to-face -face, um, again with so many beautiful Beautiful people. Um, the last song I wrote down on my notes last week, um, the, they'll know we're God's children by our love. That was what that last song was about. So uh, I was really shocked, but not shocked in a way to, to hear that song. You know, we, uh, we know our relationship with God because we're brothers and sisters, yeah? If we really feel that, then it shows that we're one with God. If we don't feel that, we're just hypocrites and we're clanging, clanging gongs. Yeah? So uh, to, to see each other and to, to feel that outpouring of love for each other is the reality that God is in our midst and God is in our hearts and the process of restoration is real and true. So why do we come? We come to amplify our faith, or as unificationists put it, uh, to grow in our life of attendance to the providence, which is to contemplate and internalize the concept of God as a heavenly parent, and to contemplate and internalize the concept of the Messiah and his bride coming as true parents. Now, in the, the Monday reflection to last Sunday's service, uh, there was a, a, a notice. Um, why do we use um, in-house terminology that guests do not understand? So I, I wrote that down, and I thought, uh, you know, if you understand the terminology and concept that God is seen as a heavenly parent and that the Messiah as true parents and in attendance to the providence, all well and good. If you don't ask, uh, know those terminologies because you're brand new here, ask the person that invited you. And then I thought, 
If the person that invited you here doesn't understand that terminology, then you really should book on a workshop and do more study. (laughs) Because it's not a guarantee that we know this terminology. Many religious people use terminology in order to avoid the responsibility of a true life of faith. I'm a Muslim. What does that mean? Does it really mean that you submit to the will of the one God? If you can really say that, you really are a Muslim. But you shouldn't say, I am this and that because I'm a member of this and that organization. Can we say, I'm human, and as a human, I'm the son or daughter of the Almighty God? That's real. If we really feel it and really live it. So... um, I've uh, stated the conclusion of the talk, so I can go home now, uh, that the time is now. Um, the, uh, the topic of, of time is really complicated. I don't, I don't want to hazard a guess about what time means, but I wanted to make a few pointers towards the passage of time and what happens over the passage of time from my personal experience and from your personal experience. So. Um, A vicar once said, um, when I give a sermon, um, I uh, give comfort to the afflicted, and then uh, I give affliction to the comfortable. I feel really afflicted myself being here. You know, the discomfort of giving a sermon is that you have to live by your conscience, and the Conscience is related to truth. So the more truth one knows, the more acute one's conscience gets. And the more acute one's conscience gets, the more pain of what our ideals are, but what we've actually realized. And that that disunity between the, 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 the goal and the ideal and the actual reality of what we've actually done. So I, I don't want to give anybody any pain but I will not say that I'm avoiding from the process of pain myself. It's a natural natural consequence of doing a sermon. So, the purpose of time is the purpose of life. I I had many, many revelations over the last three or four weeks when I was writing this this sermon. And I just, I always have a notebook in my, in my uh, right breast pocket and I write it down. So very often I don't understand what these revelations are, but I write them down anyway and think about them, contemplate them. So the purpose of time is the purpose of life. The purpose of life, um, the purpose of time is a safe settlement of the pair system. Um, it's very interesting. God or the spirit world, is defined by the unification thought as being over time and over space, transcending time and space. But for us, there is time and there is space. So could it be that we are given time so that we can fulfill the purpose of our life? God has already fulfilled the purpose of God's existence, but then God says, my existence is actually through you, so you need time to accomplish your free will, your growth, and your completion, your perfection, yourself. So mind and body can become one through active and passive action, through, through day, daytime, when you're actively going out doing things, through nighttime, when you become peaceful, and you recover your mind, you recover your body. Families expand the unity of mind and body unity to become one in heart and one in lineal tradition. When one's grandparents are dying on the deathbed, the grandchildren come to see them. I know both of my parents recently died and their their grandchildren came to see them. Um, And the grandparents say to their descendants, follow the path of goodness which I showed you. Please don't make the same mistakes that I made. That's what I would say to my grandchildren as well. But the grandchildren gather around the grandparents and say, we'll follow that love that you have implanted in our lives through your constant love for us. Without you, grandparents, we're nothing. And that is true. So we see true parents 
And we see God as grandparents, as the origin of life, love, and lineage. And without them, we're nothing. Yeah? Without, their, without their input into the blood lineage that we have in our lives, we're nothing. So our lives should be one of attendance, like grand, grandchildren see their grandparents. Um, so the passage of time leads to lineage. So the passage of time is really God's gift to us for the fulfillment of our lives and of our lineage as well. So does time result in immediate fulfillment? Um, it, one shouldn't be frustrated by the time it takes for prayer to be answered. It's not a magic formula which just automatically incarnates physical reality. Um, even the process of God goes through a process of growth and development over three stages. The coming to fruition is a consequence of the passage of time. So it does take time for the will of God to come on this earth. Yeah. Um, Rabindranath Tagore, the uh, Bengali poet who's very famous, said, the one who plants trees, knowing that he'll never sit in their shade, has at last started to understand the meaning of life. So what we do now will fruit later on. My, my wife is a landscape architect. She loves plants. So when I put something in the garden, it dies. She puts something in the garden for next year, and next year it comes up with fruit and with, uh, with beans and with pears and apples and all sorts of lovely things in our tiny garden because she sees ahead in the process of time. So what is the time to act? The time to act is now. Yeah? Don't hijack your thinking process with self-doubt and certainly never hijack the process of growth by blaming others and blaming the environment. We are responsible for our actions now. And we are res responsible in the actions that we do now for whatever fruit comes or whatever fruit doesn't come in the future. Now is the time to live my life as a child of God and as a lover of mankind. So what is the consequence of action? The consequence of action is a proportionate result. You get back what you've put into the process. If you really study how to bake bread, you'll make a gorgeous loaf. If you just chuck it in the oven, It'll burn one day, it'll be flat the next day, it'll be too fluffy the next day. It won't really be satisfactory. Yeah? So the consequence of action yeah, is the result. Yeah? Now, is the result that you make always a good one? Not always, no. Um, it depends on your motivation, on your direction, and your energetic investment of the action. And don't forget, results are sometimes visible and sometimes subtle and invisible, but nevertheless substantial. The result to our prayer can come out in some other dimension, in some other country, in some other result, in some synchronistic activity. We don't know. What we do know is that if we feel committed to a cause, then that commitment will bear fruit. Maybe just in somebody who's watching you. Maybe it won't come out in the person that, that makes that commitment. It'll come out in somebody else. I used to look at the guitarists in the, uh, in the uh, Unification Church, thinking, oh, I wish I could play guitar, but I'm useless. I can't do that. And after seven years, I thought, well, why don't you just buy a guitar and learn it? You know? I thought, well, it took you seven years to get that far. Yeah? Uh, so uh, uh, that's what I did, and that's what resulted. Yeah? Um, I haven't done as much um, good practice as our band here, so I'm not as good as our band here. But that's a karmic result of what I put in, um, what is my motivation, what is my direction, and what is the amount of energy that I put into the fulfillment of that, of that uh, uh, direction. 
So what is the methodology that we need to uh, uh, action something? Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Um, Verily I say unto you, whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Quite interesting. That, that, um, that quote is not an individual quote. It says if you agree with your brother and you work with your brother, then you'll get a result. Yeah? You get much better result through unity and teamwork than you do just thinking about it on your own. I only practice guitar on Saturdays because I know I have to play the next Sunday. Yeah? That's uh, not very uh, a wholesome um, motivation there. Yeah? So, uh, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. This is what the unification movement says is man's portion of responsibility. God has already made the farm. God has already made wheat. But we have to plant one seed of wheat and then it grows into 32 corns of wheat. So we have to do something. We have to trust in God, but we have to actually activate ourselves to fulfill the creation of God through us. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that man should do to you, do ye even to them. For this is the law and the prophets. I love that. So following... Um, the principle is what an Indian would call following karma, you know, or what a physicist would say is an equal, equal reaction to whatever is, is given out. Now, I was given a joke last week. I don't like jokes. I find jokes quite often very offensive, and I don't recommend that jokes are given in a uh, sermon almost ever. But my friend Tom Pretty, who is a musician from Birmingham, told me this joke, and I thought, that is so cool, I'm going to write this in my next sermon. He said, I recently joined a band called Procrastination, but we haven't had a rehearsal yet. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's cool. That is seriously cool, yeah? Uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't practice, you won't make an album, for goodness sake, you know? Now, how often have we contemplated, waiting a bit, Oh, you know, oh, I can't be bothered, you know. I'll just have a cup of tea. I'll just watch a bit of telly. Uh, I'll just do something else. I can do it tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. I... What happens? Nothing. Nothing. So our spiritual procrastination is pretty obvious. And I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. Yeah? I normally only do something when it's an emergency. You know, when it's just... 10 minutes to midnight, yeah? Um, I was, it was interesting. I was, um, I, when I first joined in 1975, I thought perfection of mankind will take place um, 21 years from the true parents' blessing. So that's um, 1981, yeah? So I was matched and engaged at quarter to midnight on the 31st of December 1980, just quarter an hour before 1981. God said, don't be silly, but I'll share a joke with you. Don't worry, you know? Um, so uh, where is one's art? Where is one's fruitfulness? Now, what one's art comes from what one does and from, from the beauty that one gives out in, in one's life of artistic nature. What, it, what is an artistic nature? It's one that wants to give beauty so that it stimulates joy in the object of their beauty. So, there are many young people today who get divorced they say, let's wait till we're happy before we love each other. I, you know, I, I'm not going to cry. I was asked today, don't cry. Yeah? So I'm not going to. But I've seen this tragic situation. If a young couple say they're going to wait, what are they waiting for? 
Yeah? What are they waiting for? The goal of the unification movement is the fulfillment of the three blessings, the fulfillment of a good character, the fulfillment of a good family, and the creation of a good world. It's not complicated. It's really quite, quite simple. So why wait? Yeah? Um, if one thinks about financial reasons before uh, spiritual reasons, one can wait and wait and wait and wait until we're wealthy enough to do something, and by that time the other partner's gone off, probably to make money in another place. So I, I just got this as a great warning. Yeah, don't wait, don't wait. The time is now. Yeah, if you have a beautiful spouse, love them. True father made a really cheeky comment a number of years ago, which I remember. Great. He said there's a saying in Korea that the um, family where the wife talks more than the husband is in serious trouble. <laughs> it, it will collapse. So he said, husbands, kiss your wives more often. That's so good. If, if a wife is dissatisfied, she'll moan and complain. If the wife is absolutely enveloped in the love of her husband, she won't have time to complain. She'll be basking in joy. So that is such a, such a clever uh, understanding of life. Yeah? That we satisfy each other by the fruitfulness of our characters and by the amount of, of love and dedication that we give to each other. So, what happens if one does uh, fail to act? Yeah? Breakup of pre precious relationships, separation, divorce, uh, an experience of personal alienation, of loneliness, depression, personal despair. If you do something, you've done it, and you have the power of that action, which reinforces all of your hormones. It reinforces your feel-good hormones. Yeah? Um, if you don't do things, if you wait, and if you complain and blame the environment or blame other people, it can even lead to physical sickness. So, the lack of taking responsibility now is the deterioration of the environment. You'll notice the first, the first point I made was let's have love for each other, which is the first blessing. The second is let's have love for our family and our spouse, which is the second blessing. And the third is the deterioration of the environment, the third blessing. If you disrespect the divinity in yourself, you disrespect the divinity in your family. And then you disrespect the complementary nature of mankind living in harmony with nature. I know, I know True Father tried through the Jardim Providence to make an ideal physical environment. I don't think we supported Father with any integrity or any loyalty, really, in the long term. But Father's idea was fishing industry for getting food for the third world, was making an ideal farming environment in South America to show a standard the standard of the plants in Cheongpyeong. If you like trees and plants, and if you like azaleas, they are absolutely the top ever. Yeah, they're so beautiful there. Yeah? So the consequence of inaction is rot and deterioration. Yeah? Um, the second law of thermodynamics, things go from an ordered to a disordered situation. If you have butter and you leave it in your warm kitchen, it will turn into mold and it will turn into a bad smell and it will rot and it goes from ordered to disordered. It goes from a high energetic level to a low energetic level. This is what our spiritual life is like if we don't constantly retrain. Wednesdays are good because we have Mr. Balcom's homework. Yeah? He always pushes us to constantly retrain. You know? And 
homework is really annoying. Most people hate their teachers. But I, I see uh, in Europe, most people love Mr. Balcom, and they actually say, oh, isn't he in Europe this time? Is he gone to Korea? What's going to happen with our homework this Wednesday? You know? It's actually quite a nice homework. Yeah? Why? Because it interfaces with our conscience. It's not put, on, it's not put from outside. Homework is actually what you do from inside. So, if you want to find a spouse, and if you want to create a beautiful family, now is the time to develop your character so that you are acceptable to the spouse who will be there. Now is the time to become parental. If you want to become a parent, and I say this to young people, practice loving people younger than you. If you want to be a grandparent, then practice loving really old people. Go up to any old person that you meet and say, you're my grandpa, grandpa, you're my granny. Can I look after you? I love you. This is what the spirit of home church is. I really think that home church was an eternal mission that True Parents gave us. Take 360 homes, or if you're Robin Marsh, take 36,000 homes, and serve them unconditionally. Yeah? Go to their homes, become one with people. This is what Mrs. Earl does in Birmingham. I was in Birmingham. She, she goes to people's houses and invites them into her house and serves them. And then she says, my husband is a good lecturer. Would you like to hear my husband's lecture? And they say, of course. Your cake was so nice. I would love to hear a lecture. <laughs> yeah? It's a very subtle relationship, very, uh, very good methodology. True Father said, don't think home church is a methodology. It is actually your historical lifestyle, loving and serving families. And he said the consequence of you loving and serving families will be those families will love and serve you. And your children will love you and your grandchildren will love you as a consequence of how much love you've given out. But if you wait before going out into your home church area, nothing will happen. And your, parent, your children will just say, Daddy, you're a fraud. You don't do what you say. Don't like your lectures because your lecture and your lifestyle don't accord with each other. My daughter has often said that. She has a master's in psychology. <laughs> and if, if I try and get away with any rubbish that I haven't lived, she will just, with a lovely smile of her beautiful daughter, say, nah. <laughs> So, if there is no eternal love, there's no purpose of life. If there's no purpose of life, there's no God. So, actually, our continuous revelation of uh, the reality of God in our life is consequent to our action. We have to look for God and we have to say, are you the person that I've been waiting for for all of my life? I love you. I adore you then you'll find that wasn't your voice, that was God's voice. And you'll, you'll find, yes, God lives in my heart. God lives in my, my lifestyle. God lives in my mouth. Then you'll never have a doubt about theology. Grandchildren don't understand theology. They understand the love of their grandparents. Yeah? So, I'd like to do two examples. One of our co-founder, Reverend Sun Myung Moon, and one of our co-founder, uh, Reverend Dr. Hagjahan Moon, his wife. Three points I wrote down for Reverend Moon's grabbing of time now. Yeah? In the home church providence, True Father asks us to embrace, serve, and live in 360 homes representing loving everyone in the world. He saw that as future safe settlement of mankind. And that is a quote. Yeah? So please, go out there and witness. Not, not witness to gain members, witness to give love. Two, 
in when he started the Goel Brass Band in Cleve House and in Lancaster Gate in 78 and 79, True Father asked us to practice our instruments and our lecturing abilities until they become flawless and almost in a way the physical action of what you're doing becomes habitual. He said, once you've practiced enough that your, your lifestyle becomes habitual, then put spirit and emotion into what you're doing. The body precedes the mind. Get the physical aspect done. Practice, practice, practice until you get better and better. Get better and better teachers until you get better. And then there'll be a good foundation for the spirit to come. I see that in our young band here. They've been practicing a lot for a long time. Yeah? There's more to do, but uh, I, I'm, I still think they're, they're wonderful. Yeah? Um, so I'd like to give a little, uh, a little testimony about um, True Father uh, matching me. He said, would any, uh, please could all of the female missionaries stand up and my wife, who was the pioneer of Australia, um, stood up. And then he pointed towards me. And I looked round to the man in, behind me in the queue. You know, I said, no, you. <laughs> and this, uh, it was so obvious, it went right between my eyes. And so I stood up, and I had a revelation. I, this is the perfect David. This is the ideal. This is what... David should be. And then Father threw my fiance to be into me. And boom, we sort of walked out like that. And then reality struck back again. Ah, oh, no, this is David. But I just think, you know, well, I, you shouldn't list all of your flaws and your mistakes and all of your problems because it will overwhelm you. You should actually focus on the good as true mother focuses on the good in all of us. But I saw that because father had focused on what might come if, if David was good, that is what I experienced for about eight seconds, perhaps. You know? then, then reality snuck back in again. Yeah? But... Um, how, how interesting, how interesting. Um, true father and true mother see goodness. And uh, I don't know if you've read Autobiography Yogi by uh, Swami Yogananda, but he said, the words of a yogi, when spoken, become reality. Yeah. So the words of true parents and the love of true parents and the activities like their engagement of completely enemy countries, their engagement of people who really don't get on well together. That is creative thinking of a historically enormous size and purpose. Now, um, True Mother said um, many times recently, you are more beautiful than the flowers, you know, than the azaleas. I, I'm really amazed. Um, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't make a PowerPoint, but I did make a printout, you know. True Mother loves flowers, and everywhere around her, she reside, you know, resides in the midst of colorful beauty. But she sees that's us. That's not her, that's us. That is how she contemplates us to be. More beautiful than flowers. Do we feel that? Do we contemplate that? Could we contemplate that from now onwards? I am a bud. I am a petal. I am fertilizer for the next generation. I took a photograph of fertilizer from my wife's garden, and I thought, you can't put that in a PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> really, no. It could easily be misunderstood, so I didn't bother to bring it. But I just thought, the bud is the potential of the future. The flower is the actual realization of what's happening now and the fertility of the plant. And then the compost is the investment that that plant has made for the next generation of plants. Are wonderful. So if you think you are as beautiful as a flower, that's an eternal statement. 
of positivity and of mission that you've been given. True Mother gave birth to 14 children. She lived a life of constant attendance to her husband, however demanding or painful that might have been to her. Just contemplate that. Is anybody going to complain next week? Please don't. True Mother's moral compass, True Mother's consciousness of her chosen role caused her to declare that she was only begotten daughter of God, sent to save the world, even though a huge number of both friends and foes misunderstood that statement. Do we feel chosen by God? Do we feel uniquely loved by God? So that our life has meaning and purpose for a thousand years. We're not here for three score and ten. We're here for a millennium. We're here for, for the future. Yeah? Likewise, her husband, Reverend Moon, claims to be the true parent of heaven which is the spirit world or the eternal world, and earth. That's a big claim. Do we contemplate those words? Sometimes when I look at those words, I put them in a drawer. I put them underneath the blotter on my desk. It's too challenging to think about it, but we should. Now, um, True Mother said you have to enter the palace within one year. Now, Last week, you know, the, the idea is there's a timetable. There's a timetable of providence which she's promised to fulfill. And she's saying, my timetable, I'm giving to you. Please enter the new palace within one year. Um, she's explained that there's an internal aspect that... Uh, Entering the palace isn't entering a physical building. It's actually going to a place of purity and goodness that one shines like a diamond in sunlight. So, there it's, yes, physically we might get there, but spiritually will we get there? Yeah? And is it the goal? Will providence end in one year or will it actually start in one year? It's actually a, a process of personal development of divine calling, the fact that God has called us. Last Wednesday, uh, my next point is how long does it take God to forgive man's sins? Last Wednesday I heard on our Zoom meeting, um, a true parent can suddenly forgive years and years and years of a child's wrongdoing, just like that. Just say, come, let's have a hug. Let's get over it. Yeah? I, I'm sure when all of our warring factions go into the spirit world, True Father will just say, you're my children. Let's build the kingdom of love together. End of. Stop bickering. So don't bicker. Don't blame. Don't have any give and take with anything less than the ideal. So, what time is it now? Time starts with me. True Mother said, peace starts with me. Maybe time or the execution of time also starts with me. Maybe that's what it means. There is no kingdom of peace until I'm at peace. Yeah? So maybe co-creatorship with God and with heaven and earth starts with my action right now with what I think and what I do. What I do certainly impacts the future in the same way that what I don't do also impacts the future in a negative way. How many times have I watched television instead of learning Spanish? I still can't speak Spanish. I want to, but I can't. Yeah? Maybe I've spent too much time being idle. So um, I will finish with two, two quotes, one from uh, Champumu Gyeong and one from uh, uh, Sanjin Moon. Um, 
Sanjin said, we should always love unconditionally and live each day knowing that one day we shall pass from this physical realm to our eternal home with heavenly parent. We must therefore live with great care to leave this world better than how we found it so that the future generations can inherit this glorious love, life, legacy and lineage of heavenly parents and true parents. So this is what True Father said. Educating children is not only about loving your own sons and daughters. You need to become parents whose love for your children is an offering for the world's people. When holding your children at your breast and nursing them, feed them in the mother's position representing all mothers with the heart that you're giving milk to an infant who represents all humankind. Please strive to become a mother who treats other children with the same heart as you do your own. A child who is fed and raised by such a mother will become a great person. Even if this does not happen immediately, by the time one or two generations have passed, a person who is able to govern the world will certainly be born amongst her descendants. This is the formula. So I'd like to uh, introduce the piece of paper you have on your, on your uh, seats here. There are four points to this piece of paper. The first one, and this, this is a personal meditation. So I do not want you to fill this in now. I want you to take this home and fill it in, possibly when you're alone or possibly when you're with your family, but preferably alone. The first diamond, the gold one, says, does the creator have an earthly timetable? If the creator does, what do you think it is? I'm not going to give the answer because I don't know. Yeah? It's a meditation. Secondly, in pink, yeah, the, uh, the Sung Sang diamond. Yeah? What plans and creative ideas am I praying for? What am I planning for? What am I wishing for now? What is my meditation? What is my contemplation? Am I actually wanting to do something with my life? What's my pledge? What's my goal? How often have I been through a period of time when I didn't have a goal? So the Hyung Sang, the green diamond, what will I actually do to fulfill God's plan and my personal plan and those two together? A divine plan and a personal plan. What am I actually going to do about it? I wanted to play guitar. And so I thought, well, why don't you actually buy one and practice it? Get some lessons. Yeah? You've got to think of it, then do it. And the blue diamond, the result... If I do act in this way of bringing out my thoughts and my ideas and actually doing something about it, what do I think will actually result from this? What will happen? Will we build the kingdom of heaven or are we the kingdom of heaven? So please keep the flyer safe, meditate on it and develop it. Goals and aspirations are fluid, they're not static. They grow like a farmer rotating his crops in the field. May God bless you all and please feel God's appreciation for your heart of answering his call at this providentially crucial time. Can we pray? Our beloved heavenly parent and our beloved true parents, we pray that we can understand the, the time that we're living in. We pray that we can understand the fact that you've brought the true parents of heaven and earth and that this, this calling, the fact that we have actually understood and responded to this calling results in a responsibility that we ourselves have to fulfill. We really pray that we can understand what we're doing on this earth. We can do something about it and 
build the kingdom of heaven, which means building heavenly characters, heavenly families, and a heavenly world where you can dwell in safety and in, in fruition from time to time eternally. We thank you, our heavenly parent. We thank you, our true parents, that we could be here together. We pray that you can... Uh, uh, Take our offering and accept it, however humble. And we thank you. Pray this together in the name of the Rennie family, Central Blessed family, our church.